The transformer encoder has a number of important and interesting properties. In this video, we will mention a few properties that we skipped in the previous videos. Each layer in the encoder contains two main components, the multi-head self-attention and the feed-forward neural network. Among these, multi-head self-attention is sometimes described as a contextual mapping. That is, this is where the embedding for a specific word is influenced by the embeddings for the other words in the sequence. Note that the term context here refers to the other words in the sequence. The feedforward network instead ignores the context and simply takes a single word embedding as input and then computes a new word embedding for the same word. We sometimes refer to this as a token-wise mapping since it acts on one token at a time. Interestingly, by combining these components and stacking many encoder layers, we obtain a universal function approximator. This happens in spite of all the weight sharing that we are using, which may not be obvious. In fact, if we include positional encodings in the input, the encoder can represent any mapping from one sequence to another. And that's a pretty amazing property. If we look at the first layer of the encoder, we perform self-attention on the input embeddings. Importantly, in the deeper layers, we perform self-attention on the updated embeddings, which hopefully carry more relevant information than the input embeddings. This may seem like a trivial detail since we almost always use deep networks, but using attention in several layers gives something much more powerful than the single layer attention. One thing that we hope to achieve when we stack attention layers after each other is that the information should be propagated in multiple steps or hops in a manner that resembles how people reason about text in multiple steps. For instance, suppose that we are asked to predict the next word in the following sequence. Karin has bought a guitar. When she came home, she left it in the kitchen and instead picked up some wine. When her brother entered the kitchen, he picked it up and started something. Humans understand that the brother probably picked up the new guitar and that playing may be a reasonable guess on the next word. However, to realize this, we arguably reason about the text in multiple steps. First, we realize that the word it in the second sentence refers to the guitar, which means that she left the guitar in the kitchen. Second, we also understand that the word it in the third sentence probably also refers to the guitar since he has entered the kitchen. Finally, we can use this information to guess what we might do with a guitar. By stacking encoder layers on top of each other, we hope that the network can process the information in a similar manner and that the word embeddings can be improved step by step in each layer. Roughly speaking, one could imagine that the embedding for the word it in the second sentence might contain some information about guitar and some about kitchen already after the first encoder block. In the deeper layers, we then perform attention on these updated and more informative word embeddings. And hopefully this can enable the self-attention modules to transfer the information about the word guitar to the word it in the third sentence. Certainly, if we manage to incorporate the information about the guitar into these word embeddings, it would simplify the task to produce a reasonable prediction about the next word. To a large extent, these are speculations, but I honestly believe that this is more or less what the network would do for this sequence. It's possible to visualize the weights in different examples. In this example, the input sequence is the animal didn't cross the street because he was too tired. And we are looking at the weights used to compute a new word embedding for the word it. In this case, we give large weights to the word embeddings for animal, it, was, and to, which seems fairly reasonable since the word it here refers to the animal. It should be noted that these are the weights for a specific self-attention head in layer 4. The weights in other heads and other layers are different and may also be less intuitive. Of course, the weights also change if we change the input. 
Either way, it's possible to visualize the weights and you can try to use them to gain intuition about what's going on. Even though the transformer encoder has many fantastic properties, it also has weaknesses and people are continuously trying to modify and improve on the architecture. One reason for that is that it's computationally heavy to use the encoder for long sequences. Specifically, the complexity grows quadratically with the sequence length, which is easy to see since self-attention takes the inner product between every pair of key and query vectors. Naturally, since there are n key vectors and n query vectors, there are n square such pairs. Another problem is that the network can be difficult to train. In particular, the original network is often trained with a carefully designed learning rate warm-up stage, which may be difficult to select and which also slows down training. Finally, people have demonstrated that it's often possible to remove many of the self-attention heads after we finish training without losing much accuracy. The fact that we can remove large parts of the architecture is not exactly a disadvantage, since it reduces complexity, but it may indicate that the network is unnecessarily complicated to begin with.